West Virginia has become ground zero for the opioid epidemic. It has the highest rate of deaths from dr drug overdoses of any other state in the union. Drug makers and wholesalers flooded West Virginia with huge, supply, huge supplies of these highly addicting drugs. 60 Minutes in the Washington Post learned that between 2007 and 2012, one of the big drug distributors shipped some 20 million doses to pharmacies in West Virginia. About 11 million doses went to just one area. We're talking Mingo County, West Virginia, population 25,000. We've been talking to people in Mingo. You'll hear from them in the days ahead as we arrange to make those interviews available. I was able to talk to Mark Strickland of Charleston, West Virginia. He's captain uh, of a paramedic unit there with the fire department. He describes by phone what his city and the state are up against day in, day out. It's a bad scene. Um, day in, day out, it's, it's sadly grown to a, a normal for us. It's become a norm uh, over about the last five, six years, starting around 2011, 2012. Um, we noticed lots of people uh, in southern West Virginia and then gradually throughout the state had become addicted through the ease of obtaining pain medications. Uh, Oxycontin, mm -hmm. Roxy, Vortabs, Vicodins, whatever name, the opiates they were getting for uh, chronic or acute pain. Um, right. Through the, the pill mill process, doctors, uh, for illicit reasons, would open up storefronts where people would just come in and say they suffer from pain and usually for a cash money transaction, would get a prescription for an unbelievable amount of opiates or opioids. Um, right. the, the local law enforcement, state and federal, noticed this. They did a great job in coming in and clamping down on that. But the bad thing was the addicts stayed. They were still addicted to opiates. And what grew from that was the heroin trade came back. And now we're seeing uh, heroin a lot on the streets. Uh, a lot of our heroin here is either laced or even pure fentanyl. Um, the car fentanyl that have been described in some places, we have had that here. Uh, we're, we're seeing people of all age groups addicted from teenage years up in the 20s, 30s. We've had 60-year-old patients that their doctors got cut off from prescribing opioids and people in their 50s and 60s had to, had to turn to go into the street um, to buy heroin to feed their addiction. There was nobody listening to the big red flags when the medical examiner's office routinely had death after death after death, and they could trace back prescriptions filled by doctors, and and the prescription bottles were filled out of certain pharmacies. Nobody answered that alarm. But there were people that took it as a business opportunity, and they would go get prescriptions filled for ailments they didn't have just to have the pills to sell. They, they took it as a financial opportunity. It was a business model because they knew there were enough addicts in the community that couldn't get their own prescriptions filled or couldn't feed their addiction. Mark Strickland, paramedic in Charleston, West Virginia. Mark also told me part of the problem is first responders are also having to become social workers, trying to convince the very same people to get help. And those people, they're not seeking recovery. They are seeking more drugs, and that's taking a toll on emergency responders in the field over there.